morning, guys. First of all, I want to congratulate all of you for making it through another year of school. And part of what we're going to talk about is, is that very same thing. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, that's kind of where we start off. None of these presentations that I do are the same. So I kind of wing it every time we show up. My name is Jim Howe. I was born and raised in Belleville, Michigan. Went to high school in Michigan. Wrestled, uh, drag raced, and I came to Tennessee in 1991 after graduating in high school. Drag raced the entire time, and I picked Tennessee to go to school and wrestle because it was centrally located for me to do what I really love, and that's drag race. Because when you live in Michigan and you gotta travel to the races, Michigan's a long way from every type of racing that there is. So along the way, my passion and what I wanted to do was to race cars. But I grew up in an era and in a time where the teachers were educating us just to go out and get jobs. I got in trouble a lot of times for my passion with cars. I was told that I would never make a living messing with a race car, I would never make a living drag racing. It was a pipe dream and there was no future in that for me. How many of you guys have been told that you can't do something that you truly love? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, whoever told you that is full of it. There are a couple things you can do in this world. You can go out and get a job, you can have a career, and you can be unhappy. Or you can follow your passion, and you can have a career that you truly enjoy and that you truly love. How many in the room know what they want to do when they get out of school already? That's phenomenal. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I always said that this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to race. And I was always told that I couldn't do that. You wouldn't make any money doing it. Now, is it tough? Absolutely, it's tough. But I'm going to tell you something that a great man lived by, and that is Albert Einstein. Failure is success and progress. You are going to fail. It is a given. If you do not fail at anything, then you have not pushed yourself to the boundaries that you need to be at. Because if you're doing something that is just that easy that you never fail, you certainly are not at your potential. A little something about Albert Einstein that a lot of people don't know. I work with a lot of special needs kids. It is a passion of mine also. Albert Einstein had autism. Albert Einstein was said to be a, a dummy. He was never going to do anything. He was told, it was embedded in him that he wouldn't do anything on a big level. Does everybody in the room know that that was later proven to be not true? Pretty safe to say that Albert Einstein did an awful lot, right? I'm guessing right now that we have people who raised their hand when I asked them if they had a passion. You too have been told that you will not and cannot do that in your life. I'm going to bring your attention to your faculty. You have faculty in this room who are probably extremely overqualified to be here teaching you. Do you know why they're here? They're here because it's their passion. Now, you probably have people in this facility who that may not be their passion, but those people get weeded out over time. The people who have passion and want to see you succeed, you all know who they are. And that's a given. So a few things we talked about failure is success and progress. You guys have a great automotive, a great trade, a great uh, curriculum for that, for that very thing, a trade school, um, a good machine shop, a good auto mechanics class. There are a lot of things that this, this environment here opens you up for. In motorsports, everything that we can come across as far as a career path applies. 
We need doctors, we need lawyers, we need machinists, we need mechanics, we need media guys. I've got one of your students right now running media for me. Um, my crew, we are leaving today going to New York to the Empire Nationals to race a race up there. I race on the television show Street Outlaws. Um, I have drag raced, this is my 35th year, 36th I'll be 51 years old this morning. So we talked about failures. I've had a lot of them. I fail regularly. Not just in, in racing, but I fail. Oftentimes, I fail my wife. Oftentimes, I fail my son. Oftentimes, I fail my friends. We are imperfect people. Do not set your goals to where you think you have to be perfect. You're setting yourself up for failure. And yes, failure is success and progress. So do you see how that all works? You're going to fail. What you do from there is what will determine how far you go later. You can take a failure, curl up in a ball, and never go back and visit your passion. But no matter what you do, I promise you, if your passion is something, you will always circle back to that passion. I'm gonna circle back to that faculty. You have teachers in this room who could do a lot of other things, educators, people who are here part of the school that aren't educators. You have a lot of staff here. You have janitors. You have the people in the kitchen. Those people that are cooking lunch, chances are they too could go somewhere else. They could do something else, but they're here for you. It takes that in order for us to succeed in everything that we do. How many people in the room know what a forging is? This is awesome. Have you ever heard of a part that was forged? Okay, I got one room. One guy, two, two people. So a little something about a forging. Forging is something that we use in the racing world. It is also used in your everyday life. A forging is a material that basically gets destroyed. It gets melted down. It gets put under a lot of pressure. An immense amount of pressure. From that pressure comes a stronger piece of metal. Every one of you in this room are a forging. We are going to face obstacles in our lives that destroy us. We are gonna face obstacles in our lives that put us under extreme pressure. But when it's all said and done, we're gonna come out of that as a stronger person. Each one of you face this very same thing every day. We lose loved ones. We have immense challenges that come about. Things that are meant to destroy us, or at the time, that's what we think. No matter how that works, it's a forging. You're going to survive it. You are gonna come out of that as a stronger individual. It's gonna be that way with your passion. How many athletes do I have in the room? Pretty decent amount. How many people do I have in band? Do all of you that raise your hand practice regularly? Raise your hand if you practice regularly at what you're doing. It takes approximately 10,000 hours to master whatever it is you're doing. So on an average, they say it takes about 10 years for somebody to master a trade or master something that they're doing. You can expedite that. It takes 10,000 hours. You do it 1,000 hours a year, it takes 10 years. But what if you did it 30,000 hours a year? You would master that in just a few years. That choice is up to you. You can leave here today and you can go home. You can put your feet up on the couch. You can watch TV, let the world slip away, or you can get up every day and be driven. When you're finished with school, you can go home and be driven. Your star athletes, your star band performers, your star at anything that they do are constantly working to perfect their passion. They're constantly working to be a better version of what they're doing. It took me 30 plus years to get to where I am today 
And only a few years ago did I realize that I could have applied myself even more. I could have did more. I could have worked hard. I could have gotten here sooner. But I had people who told me I would never be able to do this. And in the back of my mind, I guess I let that form who I was. I'm here to tell you, don't listen to those people who are telling you that you cannot do something. I'm going to bring upon some other people who have disabilities, who they too were told they would never succeed. Let's talk about some dyslexic people. Dyslexia is a very common, very, very common disorder that people are faced with. Do any of you guys know Tommy Hilfiger? Tommy Hilfiger? I'm in a high school and nobody but a couple people know Tommy Hilfiger? Come on, guys. Tommy Hilfiger had dyslexia. Went on to be one of the most profound clothing, clothing designers in the world. How many people know who Steve Jobs is? Steve Jobs also has dyslexia. Do you know who Richard Branson is? This might be a tough one. Richard Branson founded Virgin Galactic. He is Elon Musk's number one competitor for who's going to get into space first in a private setting. Who's going to be the first privateer, if you would, to go into space. Richard Branson also dyslexic. Henry Ford, find out if you guys are sleeping or not. Tell me you don't know Henry Ford and you're ever going to go back and read <laughs> Henry Ford is the founder of Ford Automobile. Henry Ford, also dyslexic. If you are sitting in this room and you are dyslexic, I want you to understand something. 40% of today's billionaires, 40% have some form of learning disability. There are some of you in this room, if not many, who have a learning disability. You have probably been told by peers, maybe even by family, that you're not gonna be able to do anything. The best you can do is get a high school diploma or a GED maybe. Maybe work at McDonald's or Burger King. That is a lie. People that tell you that, in my world I call those people toxic. You have a choice. You can rise above it, and you can prove them wrong. Or you can go that path and think that they're right. That choice is yours. There are also more people who have done great things who have ADHD. If you, read, if you look, I'm, I'm not asking you to raise your hand if these disabilities affect you because we're not trying to single you out. You've been singled out enough in your life, and that is definitely not what we want to do. Howard Schultz, that is the man who founded Starbucks. Does everybody in the room know Starbucks? Howard Schultz has ADHD. Alan Lally, he is the Ford Motor Company CEO, also ADHD. Elon Musk, you guys know who that is? Elon Musk has a form of autism called Asperger's Syndrome. If you've ever listened to him talk, he has an odd way about himself. He too was told he was dumb. He too was told he couldn't do anything. See how that worked out, right? Then I want to bring you to something that means a lot to me. And it's a disability that is often really made fun of. And it's very easy to think that it's funny to make fun of these kids or these people, and that are the Down syndrome kids, kids who have Down syndrome. How many people in the room know somebody or is maybe a family member who has Down syndrome? Some of the greatest people that you will ever meet, the most genuine, the most caring, and the most passionate. John Cronin is a Down syndrome disability child who started a fad that is really, really big right now, and it's probably big in the school. John owns a company called John's Crazy Socks. 
He's a Down syndrome kid that wore crazy socks every day. And it's become a really big thing all across America for crazy socks to show up. John started a business called John's Crazy Socks. In its first year, it did over a million dollars. These are people who are passionate about something and they didn't let somebody tell them that they couldn't do it. I don't have one of those crazy stories. I was blessed and the only disability that I had was just being hard headed. <laughs> and it's okay to be hard headed. The point in all this is you have a lot of people around you, your faculty, you have great students here. You have people here who have raised their hands, who are doing great things. And I ask that you lean on each other because there's another thing that goes along with everything that we do in life, and that's iron sharpens iron. Have you ever heard that? <clears throat> iron sharpens iron. You're sitting next to somebody right now who can help you in some way, some shape, some form. There are people in this room who have strengths that you do not have. You may have a strength that the person next to you doesn't have that they need. I implore you to lean on each other. Instead of making fun of these disabilities, instead of singling those disabilities out, instead of pushing aside your neighbor's dream, you have the ability to help them succeed. They have the ability to help you succeed. When I grew up, bullying was a big thing. And I'm told today in these high schools that bullying is huge. It's something that happens every day. Sadly, that is the world that we live in. You have a choice to be a better version. Every one of you be. Instead of making fun of that kid or that student who's different than you, why not get to know them? Why not learn who they are? You have the, the ability to change that kid or that person's life. That person has the ability to change yours. I hope if you leave here today going forward that you truly listen to what I am telling you. If you don't do anything else, you don't want to be a drag racer, that's fine. Not everybody is, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you can be great at whatever you put your mind to, and you have a phenomenal group of people who can help you get there. I promise you, if you don't leave here with anything other than that, it will help you more than you will ever know. I did not get here by myself. There are a lot of great people in my life who have made sure that I have what is necessary to be able to compete and do what I do. One of them is here with me today, and that's Garrett Clark. Garrett is over here inside. He runs a body shop and auto repair center right here in town called Garrett's Garage. Garrett's Uncle Wayne was a big part of my life, and I don't even know if he knew it. Uncle Wayne was in a wheelchair. He had a disability. That man in that wheelchair built a race car with really no formal education, no use of his legs. He built a race car that went on to really revolutionize pro-modified drag racing. And it was all done right here under your nose in Dunlap, Tennessee. That is another great person who did big things. And I was fortunate enough to know the man before he passed. And I leaned on him regularly. I asked him questions. He taught me a lot back in the day. And I've had a lot of people just like him who have helped form who I am today. I want you to understand that these people that help us along the way, they're beneficial. But every one of you have haters. How many have haters in this room? Come on. It's okay to put your hand up. I promise you, you have haters. There's nothing wrong with that. Haters, haters will make you famous. What they're doing 
what they're doing is they're projecting themselves and their lacks onto you. They're just not happy in their own skin. And it's okay because you're doing something that they wish they could. Somebody who is doing better than you, somebody who is in a better place than you, they're not going to hate you. It's always going to be somebody who wishes they were doing what you did. So when you have haters, it's a great thing. Just remember where you started because very few people do it. Today I run across people every day out in public, gas stations, restaurants. They know me from a television show. They view what we do as it must be nice. Not all of them, but some of them. Must be nice to be what you're doing. Must be nice to be able to do what you do. But they don't remember where I started. They didn't see that my wife and I went for a long time without cable TV, with very few necessities, because this was what we wanted to do. They didn't see that we went racing a lot of times and came home to the lights being turned off in the house. Now, is that what I'm telling you to do, not pay your bills? Absolutely not, but that's what I did. I made it a point to do what I wanted to do and to follow my dreams. With that came some consequences. Failures, if you would and it's gonna happen. So I'm gonna ask you today to think about your goals and I want you to write them down. Write them down when you get home. Write your goals down. When you put something in writing, it has a different effect on your mind. Your mind is more powerful than you can ever, ever imagine. Some people call them vision boards. Write your goals down. Go back and look at those goals regularly. When you get to a goal and you achieve it, write another one down. Write them all down. You're not going to accomplish all of them, but I promise you, you will be a better person to strive towards it. There's a thing called the law of attraction. I live by this law of attraction. Think, believe, and execute. Everything will come to you. You just have to put it in the atmosphere. You have to put it out there. There is another great man that I'm going to give you guys. If you got something to write it down with, maybe you can think about it. Go back and follow this on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook, and that's How Motorsports. This gentleman's name is Jim Quick. He wrote a book called Limitless. It's probably one of my favorite books ever. And he had a severe brain injury when he was little. He was called stupid. He was called dumb. He was told he'd never be anything. He made it his passion to outgrow and overcome that brain injury. Today, he is one of the best authors in the world. And his book, Limitless, teaches you how to use your mind in ways that you have never been taught. I wish that it had been, I wish that it had been a mandatory read for me when I was in school. Because every one of us struggle in a certain way. Guys, that really kind of sums up what I have to say today. And I don't want to bore you to death, but I hope that this caught some of you's attention. And if it didn't, if it didn't catch yours today, it will. The people sitting next to you, help your neighbor. Go above and beyond. Just make a little more effort every day. Be a better version of yourself tomorrow than you were today. I have another guy in this room that I like an awful lot who is also going to do great things because he practices his trade. He practices his passion. And I, I'm going to single him out only because I really like the guy. Quentin Weatherby. Are you in the room? Quentin. Ah, uh, sitting right in front of him. Another thing about getting old, you're blind. But uh, Quentin races a junior dragster right now. He is a drag racer, and he's doing a phenomenal job. But I promise you, 
It's on his mind all the time how to be a better racer. He's a second generation drag racer as far as I know. Um, his dad was a great racer and Quentin is destined to be even better than his father. I don't know a lot of you guys, but there are some in this room that I do know, but I, I happen to have watched Quentin grow up and I've watched him turn into the young man that he is today. Uh, and I promise you, there is another great name and a great racer that's gonna come right out of your hometown. Is there anybody else in here that races any type of vehicle? Motorcycle, dirt bike, quad runner, three wheelers? <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So you guys, back to uh, around this thing up, and I'm going to take some questions from you because I feel like it's important. And then I'm going to single out some of you that I think are not paying attention. Uh, there is many different avenues that you can go. You have a trade school here. You have a machine shop here. You have a welding class here. All of these things are used in day-to-day -day life. Not everybody is gonna grow up to be a doctor or a lawyer. Not everybody's gonna grow up to be an accountant. But every one of you have the ability to do, great, to do great things. Just don't listen to somebody tell you you can't. Follow your passion. I would rather you work and have a career that you are passionate about and that you are happy doing than to conform to somebody else's mold because I promise you, you will be a happier person in the end. That leads me back to what I was saying about some of your faculty. You have faculty here who are overqualified. They could have a better job making three times the money that they make right here. They chose you. So remember that, they chose you. And those people are here to help you. Take the time to lean on you. You know who those teachers are. I have teachers in school. I have a high school principal right now who pushed me harder than I have ever been pushed, and he was always there for me. He is still, I am thankful, in my life today. His name is Bruce Green. My wife and I just went to see him not long ago up in Belleville, Michigan. He was one of my heroes growing up. And he taught me things that molded me into who I am today. Give thanks to those teachers, give thanks to those faculty, Make sure you tell them the difference that they made in your life because I promise you that means more to them than any paycheck that they're ever going to get because that's why we're here. You guys give your faculty a big round of applause. Thank you. All right, it's open mic time. Anybody got any questions for me? Y'all are either sleeping or I did an extraordinarily good job. <laughs> no questions. Did you have a question? Did you not wear the other and you afraid to put your hand up? I want to bring the mic down to the and embarrass you to What's your question? It's okay. Well, whose question is it? Okay. 
I don't, I don't know that. A long restoration. All of my body work and paint work goes right to Garrett and Garrett's garage. Um, and Garrett is one of the one of the greatest painters. I'm not saying that because he's here. You guys follow my page. Look at anything that we do. He's one of the greatest automotive painters in the country. And you guys have a true man who can do anything. And I, I'm going to call him out a little bit too. He, uh, he quit school in the ninth grade. Ninth grade. Now, it wasn't because he thought he was smarter than everybody else. He just lived in a time and he had responsibilities that a lot of people don't necessarily always have. And he wanted to go to work. Um, he was told to he'd never make it. Never make it. Never be nothing. He never be nothing. And today he owns a very successful television company. Very successful auto body shop. Now, that doesn't mean you go out to go to school. Because Garrett will tell you, because Garrett is one of my best friends. Garrett ended up getting the education anyway, didn't he? It just takes a lot longer. So, had his situation been different where he could have stayed in school and he could have went and got more education, he would have saved himself a lot of headaches along the way. You're going to get an education one way or the other. I promise you that. This path, trade school, high school, further education, will just save you a lot of time, a lot of heartache, and a lot of aggravation. And racing horses is awesome. I wanted to race horses, but they said I was too heavy. <laughs> too heavy. We have friends who race horses. That's a really cool, a really cool thing. Yes, sir. Over here. Uh, when or or what was to inspire you? So my father drag raced. Uh, my dad, certainly my hero. He was a drag racer, auto mechanic. He also was one of those people that wouldn't take no for an answer. He worked his tail off to make sure that we were provided for, and. When he had the money, he went racing. And I grew up in a racing atmosphere. Um, so I followed in his footsteps. And I was blessed to be able to learn from a man who taught me a ton about everything. And not everybody in here has that. And that's why I was saying, just because you don't have somebody in your household who is going to push you your dreams, um, there are people around you who can. I was blessed that the person in my household just happened to be the person who could facilitate my education and help me in what I loved and what my passion was. That's what got me started. Yes, Quinn? There's another racer you just scared to raise his hand. Cole Grayson. Who? Cole Grayson. Cole Grayson? Grayson. I know he's, Grayson. I know he's back. Cole Grayson is in the ring? Really? You got your eye where I couldn't see. Somebody tell him to stand up. <laughs> so you got a couple racers. And guys, Dunlap is a city of horsepower. And I know that doesn't mean a lot to some of you guys, but there is a lot, there's a lot of really cool motorsports right here in this area. Blaze, if you fall, everybody in the room's gonna make fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a Any more questions? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, I wrestled through high school, wrestled my freshman year of college, and then decided to race full time. I wrestled heavy. In a second the nation at 194, but I wrestled heavyweight through high school. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I got a question. Um, so how and why did you start horsepower for kids? You got a really busy schedule. Tell me about it. All right, so again, guys, I don't have a script. I kind of wing these things. Horsepower for kids, I have a true love for kids. Um, I enjoy working with kids. I enjoy mentoring kids. And I had always said that when I got a big sponsor, I was going to do this deal where I went around and talked to the kids. And I kept putting it off. When I get a big sponsor, I'm going to do this. When I get a big sponsor, I'm going to do this. 
because this takes a lot of time and a lot of effort for us to put them on. Well, I got tired of saying when I get a big sponsor, because I haven't got a big sponsor, we fund this thing primarily out of the pocket with the help of certain manufacturers, with the help of people like Eric, Eric's Garage. Um, but the lion's share of this, we do out of pocket. And I just realized that I too was procrastinating. And I wanted to put this thing in motion because I'm not getting any younger. And if I can reach one kid a year and somehow impact that kid's life, then I have done something that means a lot to me. And so that's what started how motor sports horsepower for kids. I lost my daughter, Savannah, two years ago. Um, my car is named The Guardian. I wrote a poem after she died at 22 years of age. And my daughter, I am convinced, was going to do great things in her life. She was a very caring person. And she was also one of the kids that was made fun of because she was a little different. And I wanted her legacy to live on. I didn't talk about her today. And, um, and actually, it's quite, quite difficult for me to even speak about. Uh, but she died from complications from chemotherapy and radiation after being a cancer survivor from stage four nasal pharyngeal. So throughout time, since she passed, I want her legacy to live on. My greatest legacy that I'm gonna leave behind is gonna be my kids. Sienna, my daughter, could not fulfill her legacy because she was taken away from here. So I started a foundation, the Sienna How Foundation for Kids, and I used the How Motorsports Horsepower for Kids and our How Motorsports Racing to push her foundation, and her foundation helps bring some of these special needs kids and some of these other kids who don't ordinarily get an opportunity to do big things to the races. And I work with a foundation called the Best Day Foundation, and I work with a soldier's child. These are fallen soldiers whose kids don't have a mother or father anymore because of an active duty status where they died in, in active duty. And so, again, we are working with kids because I, I feel like my true calling is to make a difference in somebody else's life. And that's why I do what I do. Um, this, uh, I would do this three to five days a week if I could. I want to talk to as many kids and as many high schools, as many trade schools, as many of you guys as I can to get my message out there. And my message was, and I hope you guys took it the right way and I hope you understood. My message was, do any of you know, what, what was my message? What did I tell you guys? When you leave here today, you're going to go home and tell your mom and dad or your caregiver or your adult <coughs> that I came to talk to you. Well, do you know what my message was? Yes, sir. That's exactly right. Don't take no for an answer. Don't be told that you can never do something. Because you can. Your passion will take you places that nothing else will. But you can't sit and wait on to come to you. You got to go there. Anybody else? All right, so normally I bring the race cars down. Today we have a big thunderstorm coming in, rain, all the other great things that we deal with this time of year. So normally we would exit from here and we would go out and check out the race car and I would show you guys that stuff, let you sit in it. Sadly, the weather prevented that today. We had to reschedule this one time already and as it worked out, we were able to at least get in front of you. My social media is how HOWE Motorsports. You can get on there and follow us, ask questions. Feel free to do that. When you leave here today, if you have a question that you wanted to ask me, just go on our HOWE Motorsports page and ask me there. It's fine. I take those messages. I may not be able to get to you immediately, but I will get to you. Um, Like I said, guys, I do this thing kind of off the cuff. And uh, 
There's not like a script because every day and every situation is different. I would come into a room, the first time I ever did one of these, I had this great plan. And then when I showed up in the room, nothing fit. It was like that great plan no longer worked out. Mike Tyson had a thing once that everybody's got a plan until they could hit the mount. It's kind of that day for me. I walked in, I had a plan, and then I got hit the mount. And said, well, that's not gonna work. So since then, I kind of do it like this. It's just a, I make myself some bullet points that I need to work on. Um, And my wife wrote down a nice note right here for me, don't wait a lifetime waiting on the right time. And that is the truth. She also has another big quote that I like to talk about. And we normally focus a lot on the entire team, but they're not here, but my biggest team, and the person who makes this the most possible stand right here next to me, that's my wife. Um, Has something else that she says a lot. Don't put it down, put it away. Couldn't be a better statement. And I tell kids this all across the world. Don't wait on somebody to do it for you. If you're walking down the hallway and you see a piece of trash, pick it up and throw it in the trash can. It may seem little to you, but I promise you that little effort will change the way you do everything in your world. You're gonna sit back and go, that's crazy. I didn't pick up a piece of trash. It's not gonna change anything. It's the mental mindset that that puts you in. Just take the extra step. Go the extra mile. It doesn't, it's not, first of all, it's not gonna hurt anything. And just because you have janitors here that are supposed to be picking up after you, that's really not what their job is. So if you see something, take a load off of it. Same thing with a friend, same thing with a kid in school, you know, if you see somebody leave a pencil behind, pick it up and it takes that much effort, but it will change your mindset. Well, put it down, put it away. Your campus here is a beautiful campus. I got a chance to check it out a little bit before I came in. Same thing, if you're outside, walking around, you see trash on the ground, pick it up, go in the trash can. Your hand's not gonna fall on, I promise you but it will put you in a better mindset to do better things. Guys, that is really it. That's all I've got for you. Um, I do have some t-shirts. <clears throat> we normally bring a t-shirt cannon, but we would have taken somebody's head off with a t-shirt cannon here, so. Um, got to figure out a way to do, figure out a way to use this. Let me come up there with the one. And I'm not really sure. We got another question from my horse no more questions? No. <laughs> You're <lying>. <laughs> 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 Cobbers, stand up. Stand up. He's in the purple hoodie. He's back. It's his birthday. 
Your birthday was Thursday? It is this Thursday? It's Cabra's birthday. It's purple hoodie. It's his birthday. 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 If we sing happy birthday, can I walk back there and put the camera on Kyber? I'm film crew. I will. 
I think the cameraman needs a shirt. Okay. I'm film crew. You guys are just dying to get out of the class. Is that right? Hey, give me one. I'm film crew. I'm film crew. Now they got it. What's up? Hey, guys. Just not possible. Thank you guys, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it so much. Uh, to go back to A block, enter things, and then you will move to B block. But let's give it up for our very own Mr. Gary.